Morning, Ben Cohn. Let's talk about parametric equations. So parametric equations, they kind of seem to pop up from time to time, and they always kind of throw me for a loop. The, I think the reason that is is because they're challenging enough to kind of not just, you know, be like, oh, done. But they're not so hard that, like, it actually forces you to learn it well. So it's kind of like in that little middle gray area. So it's... um. It's kind of like that little bump in the road where it's not bad enough to fix it, but you just kind of hit it every time and it throws you off your, uh, throws you off your game. So we're going to go over parametric equations and kind of look at how they relate to uh, integration. So we have some random equation. It's not random. This is specifically written. So we have an equation up here. X equals T squared minus 9 and Y equals T. And then for 0 less than t less than equal to 6, let's find this area. And there's a lot of different ways you can look at these. So the first way we're going to look at it is just kind of getting rid of t. Now sometimes this is a lot easier than others. Um, sometimes it works out well, sometimes it really doesn't. But here we can just kind of see a, a basic substitution. It's like, all right, y equals t. Let's plug in y and see what happens. So we get x equals y squared minus 9, y equals, let's see here, then we got, oh, oh, I'll do y squared, y squared equals x plus 9, there we go, y equals square root of x plus 9. Now your thought process might be square root of x plus square root of 3, does not work that way, you'd have to, there's that little middle thing you have to take care of with the foil and the term. Hopefully you understand what I'm saying. If not, then you should probably do a little bit more studying. Okay. So now we have this equation for 0, 6, and we can graph this. So there's a couple ways we can do this. Just to kind of prove to you that I'm not going crazy here. Let's do it on the calculator. So let's do, bam, TI-83, activate. I do love this app. Okay, though I don't don't care much for TI 83s. Okay, focus on. Let's do mode down to parametric. Enter y equals. You now you see how it has this uh, in terms of t. So, hmm, interesting. Okay, so I'll do alpha t t squared. Minus 9, it will go to y, which will just be alpha t. There we go. Alpha is for the alphanumeric. And then we want from 0 to 6. So let's do window t min. Yeah, I'm good with that. Surprisingly good with that. Graph. Okay. So, hmm. So it looks like we kind of got something like y equals square root of x plus 9, where it starts off when x, when y, when x equals 0, then y equals 3. That makes sense. And it kind of goes off like that. Boom. So, something kind of like this. Okay? So now, y equals square root of x plus 9, y equals square root of x minus 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9 bum 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 and that kind of looks similar yeah I can see that because this is really squished with it okay so now that we got kind of the feeling going Let's actually solve the equation. So, redraw the graph real quick. Up, 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 up. Let's do red. Do an axis. Do multi axis. Do some axes. This will be probably about three. And our goal is we want to find the area from zero to six. So, for the x value, we're going to 
So we're probably going to do it like this. So this will be a delta x, and this will be f of x, or y, if you will. And so we're going to do the integral from, I'm going to call this t initial and t final. But I could just say initial and final, and we'll figure it out later. f of x dx. And that's, then we'll integrate the dx there. My notation is terrible, I know. We're going to change the delta x into a dx. Okay, so now, here, we're going to say that the y value is f of x. So f of x equals y, which equals t. x equals 2t, or t squared minus 9. Therefore, dx dt equals 2t minus 0. Yep. Therefore, dx equals 2t dt. And now, we can plug everything in as in t, 2t, dt, 0, 6. And then we have 2t squared dt goes to 2t cubed over 3 from 0 to 6. 2 times 6 cubed over 3. Hmm. Can I do this? Okay, so I'm going to say this is squared. This will be 2 times 3. One of these guys will cancel. And this will be 2 times 6 times 2 times 6, which equals 144. Haha. -ha. Gross. Okay. So we can see that we, we did it. It worked that way, where we converted everything over to t's. But you saw up here, well, what if we did it with x's and y's, too? Well, we could probably give that a, a go, maybe? Let's see. Let's see what happens. So, if we do it in terms of x, so this would be y, um, f of x, so it would be x plus 9 to the 1 half, dx, and I'm going to say from x initial to x final. I'll find those later. So then, how do we do that? Is that a substitution? Probably substitution. So we'd say u equals x plus 9 du equals dx, therefore we have an integration, leave off the limits of integration because I don't know what they're going to be. We'll have u to the 1 half du, which we can solve for u to the 3 halves because you add 1, multiply by the reciprocal, 2 thirds, to the limits of integration, which equals x plus 9 to the 3 halves, and then, hmm, 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 oh, two-thirds. All right, so we have t equals zero and t equals six. So t equals zero, t equals six. And we know that x equals t squared minus 9. Therefore, when x equals 0, no, t equals 0, x equals 0 minus 9, which equals negative 9. Okay, okay. And then x final equals 6 squared minus 9, which equals 36 minus 9, which equals 27. Ooh, that's a big number. Okay, so we'll be go from negative 9 to 27. 6 squared, maybe? Yep, yep, okay, I'm good with this. Switch over to blue, purple. And so then... Oh, I'm not good at numbers this big. 22 
two thirds, 27 plus nine. I just did that, just did that. 36, 36. 36 to the three halves minus two thirds times zero to the three halves. Okay. This one goes to zero. All right, so this one, I'm gonna cancel out the square root, the half, get cubed, and then we have two thirds times six cubed, which I think we've already done. Six squared times two times three, cancel, cancel, equals 12 times 12, which equals 144, check. Nope, that looks like 149, there we go. So either way we do this, we can make this work. Um, I guess kind of as a side note, one of the reasons I can abuse notation as much as I do and get away without, get away with it and having the problem still work out is we're doing ordinary differential equations. So there's two grand schemes, I guess, of, um, differential equations. One are partial differential equations and the other one is ordinary differential equations. We're dealing almost exclusively with ordinary differential equations. Even when we do partial derivatives, it doesn't mean we're doing partial differential equations per se. We're dealing with ordinary differential equations. And what it means to be an ordinary differential equation is that you are using, you have one independent variable. And I never really learned this well growing up, you know, in my Meth pedagogy or formation or whatnot. And it took me a while. Like, I kind of sort of knew of the concept in high school, but it wasn't until I got to college I was like, okay, that's what a dependent or independent variable is. So, your thought process is probably along the lines of, ooh, red, <laughs> squirrel. So, we have two axes, x and y, and you're like, okay, we have x and y, we have two dimensions, therefore we have two variables. Well, not really, because y is generally f of x. And x, so x is the independent variable, the thing you change, and then f of x would be the dependent variable that would depend on x. So you could think of it as x is your gas pedal, and f of x is how fast your car is going. There are other variables I know. But the idea would be, you know, the more you push down on the gas pedal, the faster your car is going to go. Um, you can think of it as a dial you turn, and as you turn the dial, the dial is the independent variable, and whatever gauge is flickering around is your dependent variable. And so the idea here is the only thing that can really move freely is the x. The only thing you can really choose is x. And so we only have one independent variable. Now, in your head, then you might be like, okay, okay, I see now. It's just the number of axes they have minus one. So if you have three dimensions, then you'll have two independent variables. Sometimes, but not always. So for example, let's say we have something like this, where you have an X, a Y, and then your Z, and Mm -hmm. There we go. Now oh, let's lock that in place. There we go. You throw a ball. So you're right about here. You throw a ball. It goes like this. And then it hits the ground somewhere. So I guess we should probably use spherical coordinates with the whole radius and the phi and the theta, but. I have a deep appreciation for flat earthers, so we're going to use the X, Y, and Z notation for the throwing of the ball. So you could throw the ball, and it would travel with X, Y, Z coordinates, and have a coordinate associated with each. But if you're like, all right, throw the time the ball at time t equals zero, it goes through the air with some sort of kinematic equation, hits the ground. You really only have one independent variable here, and it's probably going to be time. So you'd say, all right, so at time t equals one, 
these are what the x, y, z coordinates are. Time t equals 2, these are x, y, z coordinates, et cetera, et cetera. And so you kind of have four variables you're looking at here, your x, your y, your z, and the time. I should give that thumb in so you don't get it confused with the variable. But you only have one independent variable. And so it all depends on that. Now, it could be the sort of thing where um, you do have like three, D, three um, axes and you do have two independent variables. So you can have like a pipe, terrible pipe. And you have like an X and Y, X, Y, and you have fluid flow going through it. And you might have an independent, each, the X and Y might both be um, independent so that they both had to be taken into account. So it's like if your X is here and your Y is here, then your fluid flow will be so, or your pressure will be such and such, or your concentration will be whatever. And so it can depend on the X and the Y, but just then you can't really make a correlation between here's the number of axes you have, here's the number of independent variables. So almost everything we're doing is ordinary differential equations, and almost everything you'll do will be ordinary differential equations. You can probably do an entire engineering degree and not really understand the difference between the two. I'm not saying that it, it's a good idea, but you can just kind of move past it in life. So just know that for the most part we're doing ordinary differential equations, and we don't, we're doing with, what that means is we have one independent variable that we're working with at that time. Um, if you start talking about um, derivatives involving two uh, independent variables, then you start talking about like um, exterior product and that sort of thing, which it's good to know, but it's not going to be on the AP calculus test. Okay, moving on to one more, eh, maybe two more problems. Okay, so let's say we have this equation, and for some reason, we are not satisfied with just this equation, and we want to solve it parametrically. So there's different ways you can do it. Basically, you just take an x or a y, and you say that it equals some sort of t. So we could say that y equals square root of t, y equals 3 halves t times pi square root of t cubed. We could do lots of things, but we're going to choose something easy which is kind of standard. So then what we're going to choose is x equals t. So we have this equation, perfectly fine equation. We could use this to graph it, find the area of it. Things are fine. We're like, you know, life is too easy. We need to enjoy it, make it difficult for us and everyone else. So we're going to take this and go solve it as, uh, as if it was a parametric equation. So we say, all right, if x equals t, then what does y equal? Well, we just substitute in this t into the equation. We get y equals 3t squared minus 2t plus 1. We'll say that 0 is less than t less than 3, and we want to find the area of the curve. Now, one of the nice things here is we already have the y equals x equation, so it's fairly easy to graph. Let's see here, y equals 3x squared minus 2x plus 1. y equals, I probably could guess it, but better if I don't. Aha. And, yep, goes down, comes up. Okay. Whoop. And this is probably one at that point. Okay. So, we want to find it. Easiest way is to look at it still in terms of y and x. We have f of x dx. So you'd say that x equals t, dx equals dt, 
and then y equals 3t squared minus 2t plus 1. This will give us the integral of bum 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 x equals nope 3t squared minus 2t plus 1 dt and we're doing here where this is our little delta x this is our f of x this is our x-axis this is our y-axis okay this is from 0 to 3 so then we have 3t cubed over 3 you can tell I was going to write 2 there and I tried to save it I did not save it plus t 0 to 3 orange now cyan there we go t cubed minus t squared plus t 0 to 3 we know that when we have 0 it's just going to be 0 so I'll ignore that so 3 cubed is 27 minus 9 plus 3 so I'm going to say 30 minus 9 which equals 21. Check. Okay. Now it wasn't pretty too hard, but the idea here was we want to take a, I guess, seemingly normal equation, parameterize it, just to show that we can. You can parameterize, parameterize every, anything in life. And the way you do it is you just take the x or the y, and you say it equals some sort of something with whatever variable you want to use, in this case, t, and then substitute that back in, and then you'll get an equation with uh, t. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then we can relate um, x to t using the, if we have 0 less than t less than 3, we could then just substitute the x back in, and then should be solving it from 0 to 3 in terms of x as well. Okay. Now let's go on to one that's a little bit more challenging. Now that we kind of get the idea of what we're doing. Click, clean that guy up. Okay, so one of the things that parametric equations lend themselves to well is um, sines and cosines. And so a lot of the questions you'll see will probably actually be sines and cosines related. Mm. Delicious. Okay, so intuitively, I have no idea what this looks like. So I'm gonna go straight to the calculator. Whoop, calculator. Let's make sure on. Wonder if this app automatically turns off. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, let's see, parametric still. Y equals, delete, delete. Ah, I to, maybe if I hit clear, okay. Alpha T, where's T? Minus sin of t yep got that then y equals 1 minus cosine of alpha t there we go pop pop 1 t minus pop 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 all right now we'll do window so t 0 to 2 pi check So x will be between probably 0. Yep, we'll start off x off at 0. Oop, nope, down, down, down. x will be 0. x max will be, I don't know, 10? Yeah, I'm good with that. Then y will be between uh, probably negative 2 and 2. I'm good with that. Two. And then graph. Graph. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if that... It's not actually a circle. It looks circular because of the way we chose the coordinates. But it's only two high and like six wide. So... Okay. 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 We got this. Uh, transfer this graph down real quick. Not shapes, but pen. Do green. Green, oh, it looks like so. Where this is x, and this is y. Okay. So we will look at this, and we will do 
I think I'll quit using green for a while. I've been using too much green. Sorry, green. This will be f of x. We'll do integrate from, I'll say t initial to t final of f of x dx, which equals, so f of x is y, which is one minus cosine of t, hmm? nope, t, and x equals one minus, no, t minus sine of t, t minus sine of t, therefore dx equals one minus cosine of t. Because when you go from sine to cosine, you keep the uh, current sine. Sign with a G, not a N. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. One minus cosine T. One minus cosine of T. Did I forget the DT? I forgot the DT. DT. Okay. Integral. Hmm. And now your first thought is, oh, is this a trig substitution? No, I don't think it's a trig substitution. So, but we will foil it out. One minus two cosine of t plus cosine squared of t dt. So now though, this is a um, double angle formula. Ooh, purple. So when I do double angle formulas, I write up the formulas. So you have cosine of alpha times cosine of bravo equals cosine of alpha minus bravo plus cosine of alpha plus bravo. And then when you have sines instead of cosines, you have sine of alpha, sine of bravo. It's the same thing except that the sine changes. So you have cosine alpha minus bravo minus cosine alpha plus bravo. And this is the mnemonic I use. And then when you have sine alpha cosine, then you switch over to sines. Sine alpha minus bravo, and then you use the, your original. So this is the what I consider to be the normal one. When you change the signs, the sine changes. And when you change to sine and cosine, then you change the trigonometric uh, sine, change from cosine to sine. Okay, and so the one we're gonna use is the top one, purple. Ah, so many purples. One of those is probably violet. Magenta, maybe magenta. Is magenta just another word for pink? Okay, so if alpha equals bravo, then we have cosine squared of t equals cosine of zero plus cosine of two t all over two. This goes to one equals one half plus cosine of two t. Okay. Bring this down. One minus two cosine of t plus one half plus cosine over two of two t. Dt, dt. Go, nope, not green. Not green, I am done with you, green. Three halves. So let's see here. When we go from cosine to sine, we change the sine. So this will be two sine of t plus, I'll do three halves t over here, plus minus, minus sine of 2t all over 2 divided by 2, so it'll be over 4, because if we did the, here we do substitution, we'd say u equals 2t, then for du would equal 2dt, simplifying it, 
over four. And it's over four because you already had that one, two already. Okay. Let's see, then what was it going from zero to three? Pretty sure it's zero to three. Zero to two pi. Zero to two pi. Okay. Hmm. Back to cyan. So, two pi. You got your unit circle here. This is zero. This is two pi. This is pi. This is three pi over two. That's pi over two. This is three pi over two. And so we have these are both the sign will be zero. So this is zero. This is zero because the sign of four pi will be the same as um, two pi because you're just going around the circle twice. So then we're left with three halves times two pi. Two's cancel and you have three pi. So the area under the curve of this parametric equation for zero less than t less than two pi is three pi. And the way we did that is we looked at it. So we first, we first graphed it to kind of make an idea of what we know what we're looking at here. Make sure there's no um, x-intercepts or something where we have to do a negative and break the integral up. And then we took the integral of f of x dx, where f of x was just the y, and the dx was the x value taking the derivative of. And we could have reversed it though. We could have this one. It would have been difficult because we would have had to do one integral minus another one. But if for some reason this was looked more like this, if the x and the y's were reversed, we could just reverse it. Instead of f of x dx, we could have been f of y dy. Would have worked out just fine. Just which it just all has to do with which direction you want to integrate, which will be determined by your dx. Then we came across a double angle formula. We wrote up the double angle formulas that we use for our mnemonic. We then plugged in the appropriate one to get cosine squared. And then we went through and solved the integral and we found the answer of three pi. So this is kind of a kind of a review, kind of an introduction, because you really didn't use parametric equations with integrating. But if you're just kind of throwing this randomly, there's a good chance you could have figured it out. But it's good to go over it in a slightly more formal manner so that when it does randomly pop up in life, you're like, ah, I'm going to get this done slightly faster because I've seen it before. And there'll be less panic, less stress, better life. Okay? Sounds good. I will see you guys next time.